Welcome back to News Across Nigeria, where we tell you what's happening now in the Nigerian states. Before we continue, we'd like to remind you that all our top stories can be found on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Do visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. You also do well to interact with the eyewitness feature in the Channels TV app on the Android, iOS, and Windows platforms. If you have pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, tap the app on your device, swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu, and follow the instructions. Now, some facts about Sokoto State, one of the great Nigerian states, all indeed are great. And this is in the Northwest. Sokoto was created uh, back in that year, you can see, and it's called the seat of the caliphate because of the historical importance of the state uh, in the Islamic religion. The name Sokoto is of Arabic origin and is the seat of the former caliphate, uh, the citadel of Islamic learning in Nigeria. The capital, not far from the name of the state, Sokoto City. Also, some other facts about Sokoto State, the Sultan of Sokoto is a spiritual leader of Nigerian Muslims. It's uh, the reign of the Fulani Empire in the 19th century. Uh, in Sokoto was an important uh, full estate and uh, Governor Aminu Tambowal is the man in charge. And now to some politics in the north central part of the country, the flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress in Kogi State, Abubakar and Audu, has promised to declare a state of emergency on the economic and power sectors in Kogi if voted in as governor. He said this while receiving a former chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, Leke Abejide, who was decamped, who has decamped to the APC with hundreds of supporters. He was received in the Alu community in Yagwa East local government area. It was all jubilation at Community Secondary School playing ground. The venue of the rally when the Kogi State Governorship candidate of the APC, Abubakar Audu, and Governor of Jigawa State, Abubakar Badaru, arrived in Alu, the western senatorial district of the state. The APC campaign train is in Alu to seek for the support of the electorate ahead of the governorship polls scheduled to hold on November the 21st. After most dignitaries are duly recognized, Chief Audu and Governor Badaru mount the podium to receive a former PDP chieftain, Leke Abejide, who is dumping the PDP to pitch tent with the All Progressives Congress alongside hundreds of his supporters. Leke Abejide, who decamps to the APC, gives his reasons for quitting the People's Democratic Party. PDP, they are conservative in nature. They remain where they are since they started. But my own mind is progressive in nature. So if they, where I have family, where I believe I can relate with people, is APC. And that is why I moved to in the meantime, the PDP spokesperson like in Kogi State, well, Bode Ogumola, says Abedide's exit will strengthen the party's internal democratic principles. In as much as I would like to wish them well wherever they are going to, be it Jibril Isaichosho, who contested the primaries and lost very badly, be it Abedide, who decided to, who decided to leave uh, the party yesterday. Um, honestly speaking, we are, we are not raw food. It is good riddance to bad rubbish. More intrigues continue to trail the preparation for the Kogi State governorship election. But as the candidates go around to solicit for electorate votes, it will be interesting to see just how these defections affect the results at the polls. In the South-South, the Cross River State Governor Ben Ayadi has expressed the commitment of his administration to the expansion of access to portable drinking water in the state. The governor, who said this at a meeting with the country director of the World Bank Group, Mr. Rachid Benmas, uh, Ben Masood, 
in Apuja said the provision of water is a cardinal focus of his administration given its importance to the overall well-being of the people. According to the governor, water is a great asset as 80% of diseases in Africa are waterborne and can be avoided with access to clean water. He thanked the World Bank for assisting the state through the joint funding of some of its critical water infrastructure and expressed his desire to evolve a new management style for the state's water board, which will ensure sustainability and free it from the control of government. Traders in Akwaibum State may now heave a sigh of relief, as the state government, uh, government has promised to give interest-free loans to traders. About 1,000 traders will be benefiting from interest-free loans provided by the state government to boost small and medium-scale businesses. This promise was made by Governor Udom Emanuel when he met with them in Uyo, the state capital. The loan, according to Governor Emanuel, is to boost these small-scale businesses, as I mentioned, and also alleviate the suffering of traders. This is one of the fulfillments of my campaign promise to support legitimate small and medium enterprises to become economically self-sufficient. Today, we are targeting traders. This is just the beginning of a long, fruitful partnership. This facility that we are giving is interest-free. And the sentiment that inspired this today is that sentiment of progress. That sentiment that forever and ever we shall be great. So go and boost your pressures, grow your enterprises, and improve your household income and welfare. You shall also benefit from a number of training. How about the you promise not to Help us let's talk to our people. Rome was not built in a day. Come, let's not join hand to build together. Yeah, now we are still a little peaceful. So that the foreign investors can come in and live peacefully. Manuel, Governor Akwaibum states, let's turn our attention from the south-south to the southwestern part of the country now, and residents of Bankole Street in Idum area of Lagos have called on the state government to come to their aid. The residents have been plagued by perpetual flooding owing to the lack of drainage system or a proper drainage system on the streets, which has now made life unbearable for the residents. A major part of the street, as you can see, has now been labeled uninhabitable because of a large pool of water that has refused to drain away. Residents fear that if urgent action is not taken, the flood, which they've been enduring for several months now, poses a serious health risk for the residents. When Channel's television crew got to the area, it appears some of the residents have already left their homes, while schools and businesses have been shut down. Has been like this for some time now, and uh, we've complained. We've gone to Alausa and we've met the people there, those people in drainage services, and also, and we even had several meetings with them. They promised that they will come and look at this thing, but up to now, nothing has been done. And if this thing is left like this, that means all the the, the houses on this street they are they 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 they, 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 they can they can they go down at any time. And uh, we are appealing to the government to actually come and look at this in second time because they came sometime last year and probably early this year they came. But up to now, nothing has been done. The last time we complained to them, they said probably because of the fact that uh, something was not incorporated into the, in this year's budget that they would not be able to handle it this year, that they had to uh, incorporate it in the, in the supplementary budget. Staying in Lagos State after years of being in darkness, 67 communities in the Bejuleki area are about to be lit up as the state's government is set to have them connected to the national grid under its Light Up Lagos project. At a press briefing to kick it off, officials of the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources told journalists that the state government also plans to light up major roads in the state, including adjoining boundaries with its neighboring state, Ogun. In 2007, the Federal Road Safety Corps reported that about 7 million vehicles fly Nigerian roads daily, besides being the commercial capital of Nigeria. 
But driving at night poses a high risk to motorists, especially in areas where there are no street lights. In the daytime, it would appear that these electrical installations are operational. But the truth is, most of them are not functioning at all. Either the bulbs are dead or the connecting cables are vandalized. In some cases, the project is left halfway. As a follow-up to Governor Akimumi Ambode's promise to make electricity available to communities and illuminate major roads, the state government has unveiled what is called Light Up Lagos Projects. The projects will be delivered in phases. The first has to do with um, lighting up Lagos from Bega, the boundary between uh, Lagos and Ogun State, down to the highland. The second has to do with lighting up from Ikorodu also to the highland. While the third phase of this exercise has to do with uh, connecting about 67 villages at Ibejuleki to the national grid. The state government is considering involving the private sector in the maintenance aspect through outsourcing of the street lights. We are looking at, in terms of maintenance, to have the private sector involvement. And by that, I mean that we will be outsourcing the maintenance of these street lights to contractors that are well versed in street light maintenance. The road lights will be connected to independent power plants closest to them. The reason we are connecting these street lights to the independent power plants is to one, ensure safe and reliable alternative power, and two, to re reduce our operational expenses because we already have power going through those networks. The third phase of the project is the electrification of the Ibejuleki axis. 67 communities have been earmarked to benefit from this. We're talking about places from the Ibejuleki junction all the way down to Odiomi. That's taken into account places like Elemoro and uh, Magwalade and areas like that in the Ise community. These will be lit up. We have babies that were born four years ago that have no idea what light is. The project is expected to create thousands of jobs. Governor Akiomi Ambode has has given the assurance that it will be completed before the end of the year. Street lights such a major problem across all the Nigerian states and in many communities, if not all of them, as well. We are going to take our next break. And when we come back, infrastructure again, but this time in Aba and a master plan. 